It has lights because they gave me a budget. Before I start explaining all the code and the nitty gritty of how all of this works, I want to first kind of tell the story of how it all started. I'm a member of 3D Free, USC's premier 3D printing organization, uh, and I worked with a team of two other people at the beginning um, and ended up carrying this project to completion uh, by myself. But we were given the pitch of 3D printed paintings. This is Nighthawks converted into a 3D model. I'll explain a little bit more about the process of how we actually get these images. We start by just taking a normal version of Nighthawks and we slice it down into a size that we like and get it into a really low quality picture so we don't have to run our code as long. This is because we run our code over every pixel in the image, so the smaller it is, the faster we can convert. You can upload it pretty simply here uh, and rename it to My Paint or change this to the name of the file you want to convert. And running this program, it will go through and convert it and create an STL file. We'll save it base default, saved as model. You'll see it'll also print out a black and white picture of what is being printed out. From here, you can download it and print it out for yourself. Here's some more finished projects. Uh, we have Starry Night, but backwards. Uh, a terrifying Mona Lisa, a half-printed Great Wave Van Gogh with cool lights. And we also have a Moongus using a newer version of the code. Um, and I'll explain more of this later. Uh, to explain how this code works, I kind of want to talk about what 3D models actually are. They're kind of this collection of points in space with x, y, and z coordinates that are connected by faces. Uh, usually we use triangular faces because they are simpler to define than square faces. So we might end up something like this uh, for our cube. And the way this is stored in data is we have a, an array of points and we have an array of faces that are all defined as sets of points. What we do in our code is we create the set of points based off of the grayscale value of each pixel of the image and that pixel's location inside of the image. Essentially what our conversion does, for instance on this top left corner, the one at 0, 0 in the picture, we'll create a vertex at 0, 0 with the value of z equal to the grayscale color of that pixel in the image. And then we'll also do this for the four kind of adjacent pixels to the gray. So we end up creating a full face here, actually two faces because we use triangles, that has this color. And it ends up creating a more pixelated view, but also makes the image a lot more clear. Probably the most interesting part of this code is the code that defines these faces. We have this array of points, but we need to define all of these faces that connect them. We have to do it in a way that can be expanded for more pixels or less, and we don't know how many pixels there are. So essentially, I wrote some basic for loops that will go through and check for the two kinds of triangles we can create. We kind of have these upper left-hand corner triangles and these bottom right triangles. So the code will go through and basically check to see, does this point exist? And does this point exist? And if so, it will find those and basically connect them and store them. And it'll do this for every single point on both the top left corner and the bottom right, and that will generate all the faces of our image. Taking a look at the actual code, we used NumPy STL to make all of these STL files and to create them, and we used PIL for some basic image processing. Essentially, we just open up the image, convert it to grayscale, do some transpositions, and add a nice border so that we can very easily connect it to the container that we create. We gather some information from the picture and have some scalar values that let us control the conversion a little bit stronger. Then we go through, like I said, we go through every single picture of the image, and add it to an array storing its color and its location. We of course print it out just to make sure everything's working. We'll show the image so you can actually do a direct comparison of the image to the 3D model. We hard code in the vertices actually, since we know it's going to be exactly um, like this every time. So our vertices for that and the faces for that are set every time. 
here is that interesting bit of code here. As you can see, we're going through every single pixel and we're checking to see if we have one triangle and we're checking to see if we have the other triangle to generate all of the faces of the image. You'll see down here that we have just a tiny bit more stuff down here where we essentially some boilerplate code that creates the mesh from all of these faces and then combines it and saves it as model STL. All this code is posted on GitHub, so you can download it and convert your own pictures as well. I hope you guys have a lot of fun with it, and I hope you guys learned a little bit of something about 3D models.